In this video, I will teach you everything about my favorite form builder, based on WordPress and how you can create a contact form with conditional logic like the one you see on the screen right now. We will also examine this plugin's additional features, which make it probably the best form builder in the market right now. My name is Nick, and I am the founder of WPGoPro.com. We assist you with improving your WordPress skills so you can make more money for yourself, your clients, and your business. If you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Also, give the video a thumbs up so Google knows it was helpful to you. Let's get started with the video now. So, we go to Installed Plugins, we click on Add New, and we search for Fluent Forms. It's the first on the list. Click Install Now and then Activate. Once you've got it installed, go over to Fluent Forms and then hit All Forms. As you can see, there are already two forms, as samples. A Contact Form and a Subscription Form. We can preview the Contact Form like that. One of the additional features of the Pro version of the plugin is that you are able to use the form preview to add styling to the form. Let's go back to all forms now and click add a new form. If you want, you can start from scratch by clicking on new blank form. If you really like the idea of having templates, you can buy their pro plan and unlock dozens more templates for all sorts of genres. The free version includes templates for a contact form, a conversational form, which I will explain later in the video, a newsletter form, a support form and a polling form. In the professional version you find templates for education, marketing, nonprofits, ITAHR, finance, etc. It goes on and on. There are literally dozens of templates to show you how fast and easy it is to get a form loaded up. I'm just going to choose this contact form and hit create form. The editor loads up here, where I can add new fields or customize the template. I can rename the form by clicking on the top left corner. It's very much like a page builder experience, where I can simply add text and fields by dragging and dropping modules onto the form editor. All available fields are in the right column, acting like a toolbar. There are general fields, advanced fields, payment fields, and calculated fields. We are going to use some of them later in the video, for a few examples. Keep in mind, in the free version, only the general fields are available. Now let's say we want to add a drop-down field to this contact form. Click on the pencil icon to customize the field. We are giving it a label, as this field will be the department, with three option values, sales, marketing, and customer service. Click on Save Form, and then on Preview and Design Form. As you see, our form looks fine. Click on Settings and Integrations to configure the functionality of our form. Firstly, the confirmation of successful submission, which can be shown on the same page, or on another page of our website, which can be chosen from this field, or even our visitor being redirected to a custom URL. We type a typical message for the submission here in the message field. Actually, we may further customize our message by using short codes with the visitor's details provided on the form. So click on Add Shortcodes and select the shortcode with his first name. A little bit of customization on the form's layout. Also, the ability to set some restrictions or schedule the form if required. Don't forget to save the form at the end. Let's go back to All Forms. Click on the form's short code to copy it and let's now create a new contact page. We are giving a name to our page and we are bringing the Gutenberg block for short codes. We paste in our short code and publish our page. Let's view our page now. Voila, our contact form is ready and looks fine. Let's now take the final step of testing our form. Click the Submit Form button. The confirmation message is now on screen as expected. 
Let's now check the forms entries. Go back to all forms and click on the forms entries. There is only one entry at the moment, the one we have just submitted. Click on the blue icon to view the data. Everything is as expected. And that concludes the review of the free version of the Fluent Forms plugin. Now let's have a look at some of the extra features we can use with the pro version of the Fluent Forms plugin. As an example, I am going to create another contact form with some additional logic applied this time. So, let's drag on the form the name field. A simple text field. The email address field. A text area field. And a drop down field. Now, let's click to edit the label of the field and make the first name a required field. Next, I click to edit the drop down field and in the label, I type the word department. In the options for this field, for the first option, I am typing sales. The other two options are marketing and customer service. Next, I give the label subject to the text field and the label message to the text area field. Also, let's give some extra rows to our message field and leave it with one column only. Click on save and the form is done. I click here in the top left corner, so I give a title to the form. For example, I give the title smart form demo. Before moving on to the next step, I think it's better to turn a couple more fields as required. So the subject field should be required as well as the department drop down field. Also, I set the maximum allowed characters in the message field to 500. Once more, I click to save the form and let's preview the form to see what it looks like. Since we are using the pro version of the plugin, we are able to change the form style template. As you are able to see, there are three predefined templates, but I am going to choose the custom one and experiment a bit with the style. At first, for the labels, I pick the red color. In this section, I can make changes to the typography, but in this case, I am going to leave the default values. In the next section, I can change the style of the input fields. Again, guys, you understand you can experiment and make the form as you like. So let's save it and move on to the next step. Alright, now I should update our contact page with the shortcode of the form I have just created. So. I go to the Pages section on the left and I click to edit the contact page. I replaced the old shortcode with the new one and I updated the page. Let's now view the page. Everything looks fine. Now, let's go back to the form. Click on the form settings and then go to the email notification section. The default notification is for the administrator but it is disabled, so I have to enable it like that. Now click on the blue icon to check the settings of this notification. Let's assume that we wanted to notify our sales department in case the user had selected the sales department in the department drop-down field. In this case, I checked the configure routing option. The field send to should be equal to the email address of the sales department. While the field if checks the value of the department field if it is equal to the sales value. So, if this conditional logic works, our sales department gets the notification. Okay, let's save this notification and move to the next step. Now, we are going to create a confirmation message for the visitor. So, click on the blue button, Add Confirmation. We give a title, for example, Confirmation to the visitor. The default message looks fine, so I am going to leave it as it is. At the bottom, we can add the conditional logic for this confirmation message. So, let's assume we want to send this notification if the user has selected the sales department, so in this case the department field is equal to sales. I guess it would be more meaningful to modify the title and make it confirmation for the visitor from the sales department. Okay, fine, let's save it now and go back to the confirmations menu. I am going now to quickly create another two similar confirmations for the marketing and customer service departments accordingly. There is a quick way to do that by duplicating the confirmation message we have just created. So, I click on the green plus icon to get a copy to work with. The title should be confirmation for the visitor from the customer service department. Also, the conditional logic should now work for the customer service department. 
All right, save the confirmation and let's repeat the steps for creating the last confirmation message from the marketing department. Okay, fine, we have successfully created our three confirmation messages. Now, let's go back to the email notifications. Currently, there is only one email notification for the administrator. I am going to duplicate this notification and create another email notification for the marketing department. So, I click on the green plus icon to get a copy to work with. This notification should be sent to marketing department. So I changed the email address and the logic should work if the department is equal to marketing. Let's save the notification and test our form. So, I am going to fill out the form with some test data. I selected the sales department, so this department is going to get an email notification after submitting the form. Also, the visitor gets the confirmation message on screen. You can see the message saying, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. If you like it, you can send an email notification to the visitor as well. So let's do that now. I clicked on add notification. I gave the title new notification to the visitor's email. The send to field should be the visitor's email address. So check, select a field and then choose the email field from the form. Type something in the subject field, for example, message received. The body of our email can be dynamic using form fields by clicking the add short codes green button to the right. So I type hi and I get the full name of our visitor. Then I write the rest of the message. Of course, you can add pictures or your logo and make any changes to the style if you wish. After completing the message, click save and let's do another test to see how it works now. So let's go to the contact page. Again, fill out the form with some test data and when finished, click on submit. This time, our visitor gets not only the confirmation message on screen, but also, if we check his mailbox, he should have received an email from our email server. Let's check the mailbox now. As you see, the notification email is there. Let's now see some extra features of the Fluent Forms plugin. Forms for accepting payments via PayPal or Stripe. So let's edit the form we have just created and add payment functionality to it. I go to the tools on the right and I select the payments fields. As you can see, there are a few fields available to use. I get the payment field, which can be customized to what people are paying for. I will label this field as SEO checking service and as payment amount I put $100. I changed the price to cost. Let's save the form now. The payment methods field defines the methods we accept payments through. As I already said, you are able to use PayPal or Stripe. Save the form again and let's test it. Some testing data. And now at the bottom of the form we see the cost for the SEO service is $100 and we are able to select the payment method. I have already enabled the Stripe test mode, so let's see how it works. I provided the fake credit card number for testing. As you can see, the payment went through. Let's check the form's entry to confirm the payment has been recorded. You can see the payment record is there. If you don't have a standard cost, and let's say you want people to give you a donation, you may use the field custom payment amount. Let's see how this works. So I deleted the payment field from our last test. Save the form again and let's test it. In this case, the amount field is an input field, and the user has to provide the amount of money. One last thing about the payments. I am going to add the field item quantity. As you can probably imagine, this field helps to define the quantity of a product or service. Actually, we may set the minimum and maximum values of the quantity we accept. For example, the minimum quantity is 1 and the maximum is 10 units. Let's save the form and test it again. 
reload the form to get it updated. Ok, let's pretend we don't know the maximum quantity limit and type 20 units. You can see our validation works fine. The next feature of Fluent Forms I would like to mention is the calculated fields. In some cases, you need to make calculations between different fields of the form. Let's see how you can do that. I create a blank form and I add a couple of numeric fields. So, field A and field B are both numeric. I duplicate field B and I create another numeric field. I labeled this field as total. In the advanced options of this field, click to enable calculation. So, now we are ready to create the formula for calculating the total of numeric field A and numeric field B. In order to do that, click on this little square icon at the top right corner of the calculation expression field. Select field A and then add the plus sign and again select field B. Our formula looks fine, so click to save the form and let's test it again. I click on Preview. Enter the number 5 in field A and the number 4 in field B. As you see, the total field has been calculated and its value is 9. I click on Submit and let's go to the dashboard to check the entry of this form. It's the form with submission ID 10. Click to open up the form. The entry is there with correct values. Fluent forms do have the ability to accept signatures if you purchase the signature add-on pack. It is a great option if you need your visitors to sign something, for example, a registration form. Let's see how this works. I dragged the signature field at the bottom of the form like that. Let's save the form and test it. I reloaded the form. Now at the bottom of the form there is this large signature box and I could sign with my mouse or my finger if I was on a phone. If you are not happy with the drawing of your signature, you may reset it and try again. Time for a quick look at the global settings of the Fluent Forms plugin. So, click on Global Settings on the left column. The first tab is Settings. Here you can define some global settings for all the forms you create. For example, where you want the labels or the help messages or the error messages to appear on the form. Next is if you want to get weekly reports, so you have a summary of the entries in the week. Actually, this is good as you don't have to visit your dashboard often. In the miscellaneous section, you may enable or disable some of the default options as well. Unless you are looking for something specific, I advise leaving them with the default values. The same applies to the permission section, where you could give access to manage the forms to other roles besides the administrator. Next, click the double opt-in settings. This is good if you want to create a landing page for collecting email addresses. I think in some countries, double opt-in is compulsory, so it's good to have it as an option. Payment settings. Ok, this is where you can set up your payment methods if you want to have payment forms on your website, as I showed earlier in this video. As I said, Stripe and PayPal are supported and I have already enabled the test Stripe method here. I am not going to go into details about the setup of payment methods now as this video is getting too long. However, if you really want some help on that, just leave me your comments and I will try to make another specific video covering that. Next, the reCAPTCHA. Fluent Forms plugin supports both versions 2 and 3. Again, if you want help to enable reCAPTCHA with your Fluent Forms, leave your comments below. Now let's click on the tools in the left column. Here, you can find a way to export in JSON format any of your forms and input it on another site. Let's say you have created a nice and complicated reservation form and you want to transfer it to another site. This is the way to do it. Export the form from the first site and import it to the second. Let's see how it works. I selected the form with ID 7 to export it. The JSON file gets downloaded to my downloads folder. Now I go to import forms and upload the file. If we go to all forms, we can see the form has been imported and it's got the ID number 8. We can preview it to confirm it works.
Another important feature is that Fluent Forms work fine with the Fluent SMTP plugin. If you don't know, Fluent SMTP is a free plugin for securing that your server's emails are delivered and they don't end up in spam folders. I have already created a video for that and you can find the link in the description below. Let's now move to the integration modules menu in the left column. Fluent Forms can be integrated with a great number of other WordPress plugins or with important WordPress components like user registration and WooCommerce. All that you have to do is to go to the integration modules section and enable the corresponding integration. We can see here, among the others, integrations with Zapier, MailChimp, Campaign Monitor, GetResponse, ActiveCampaign, and SendInBlue. Those services are good for creating email automations and marketing campaigns. I should mention here that Fluent Forms has native integration with its brother plugin, Fluent CRM, which is a very powerful solution for email automation. I have already scheduled another video dedicated to Fluent CRM, so if you'd like to learn how these two plugins can extend your marketing campaigns to another level, just hit the subscribe button now. Other interesting integrations are with Telegram and Slack for passing messages to groups if needed. Finally, the integration with Google Sheets can help you automatically extract data from your website and maybe create another automation. If you noticed in the integration modules, I enabled the landing pages module. So let's see how this can help you create a nicely working landing page for your website. I go back to the forms. I opened up the form we have been working with and went to the Settings and Integrations tab. Now, we see there is a landing page tab and I clicked on that. If I enable this, my form will be transformed to a landing page without a page header and footer. It also gives me some designing tools to make the page look even better. So, let's save the form and click on Preview to see how it looks. If I click on this red icon, we can see the form in a better way. It's a nice looking landing page which can be used to automate your marketing campaigns. Another great feature of the Fluent Forms plugin is the ability to create conversational forms. Conversational forms can boost form completions, so in some cases, they can be used to collect important information from your visitors. Let's see how it works. In order to create a conversational form, you have to click on the down arrow icon on the right side of the blue button that says, Add a new form. That gives you the option to create a conversational form. Also, you may prefer to click on the blue button, Add a new form, then select the conversational form template and click, Create form. So, here we have a simple conversational form with a few fields. Let's save the form and see what it looks like. As we see here, the fields of the form come one at a time, and when the user answers one, then the next one comes forward. At the bottom you can see what percentage of the form is completed. When submitting the form, the confirmation message appears on screen, as with all other forms. Let's now go back to check the form's entry. It's the entry with the ID number 8. I clicked on that and, as you can see, it works the same way as all other forms. Another great feature of the Fluent Forms plugin is the ability to create polling forms. So, if you are planning to run an online survey in which participants communicate responses, typically by completing a questionnaire on your website, then this may be the way to do it. Let's see how it works. If you don't want to start from a blank form, in order to create a polling form, you have to click on the blue button that says, Add a new form, and then select the template of a polling form. So, here we have a simple polling form with a few fields. Let's save the form, then click on Preview and see what it looks like. As you can see, it is a simple questionnaire, and I am going to provide some test data and submit the form. Let's now go back to check the form's entry. It's the entry with the ID number 9. I clicked on that and you can see the questionnaire is saved in the same way as all the other forms. Alright, now let's talk about pricing. At the moment I am recording this video, which is on the 10th of September 2021, there is a special promotion that I guess no one could resist. As you can see, you can get the Fluent Forms plugin for a single site for $47 per year. I believe this is special for having all this functionality the plugin offers. Of course, if you are an agency, you can get it for 5 websites for $103 per year or even for unlimited websites for $159 per year. 
Moreover, there is a more tempting deal. If you click on the lifetime tab, you get the option to pay a bit more for a lifetime license. So you pay once, and you get all the updates for a lifetime. I believe it's a deal you can't miss, and this is what I did for myself. I paid $199 for a lifetime. If you like the Fluent Forms plugin, I leave the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, so we may receive a small commission in case you purchase it. There is no additional charge to you. This helps us continue to create the free content that we publish. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. My name is Nick and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. Don't forget to subscribe and the thumbs up button. Also, leave your comments below. Have fun with it till next time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and health.